Texas spent ages in the shadow of two other states, California and New York. And it's no wonder. On one coast, there's Hollywood and Silicon Valley. On the other, you've got probably the most famous city on Earth. With all that spotlight on them, Texas just kind of faded into the background. And it's about time because Texas is the second biggest state in the U.S. with a powerful economy, a rich history, and loads of national landmarks. It shouldn't be underestimated. And it looks like people are finally starting to get that. Texas's rank among the most important U.S. states is changing so fast it's practically on the verge of claiming the top spot. Why? A cup of coffee and I'll fill you in. Just an unobtrusive reminder to do a little something under the video. And thanks to those who get my wish to stay anonymous. Where should we begin the story of Texas's rise? Oddly enough, with California, a state that held the top spot for so long as the most important one in America. But lately, more people have been moving away from California than settling there for good. Alongside a surprisingly fast drop in population, housing prices have gone up in the state, and so have utility bills. It's obvious this isn't exactly encouraging for newcomers. In the end, California lost 817,669 people in 2022 alone. And over the past two decades, more people have been moving out of the state every year than moving in. Apart from sky-high housing prices, Californians also have to contend with massive expenses for essentials like groceries, transportation, and healthcare. I've already mentioned utilities. All of this forces many to consider the difficult decision of moving to a new place. For comparison, you can buy a house like this in California or one like this in Texas. Each goes for roughly $150,000. The average price of a single-family home in California is a staggering $737,677, which is more than twice the national average. All of this really affects people who live and work in California. Between 2018 and 2022, 352 companies moved their headquarters to other states. The reasons given include rising operational costs, stricter regulations, and concerns about the business climate. And where do people tend to move from California? Exactly, to Texas. According to the census, 102,442 people moved there from California. Arizona comes in second with 74,157 people. Yeah, the gap is that big. While California's population is shrinking, Texas's population is only growing. It's actually gone up by 19% from 25.2 million people in 2010. For comparison, the entire U.S. population grew by 7.7% during the same period. The biggest increase was seen in Harris County, where the population grew by 673,371 people. It's not too surprising. This is where Houston's located, the largest city in Texas and the fourth most populous city in the United States. On this map, you can clearly see the population changes. The dark green areas are where the population has increased the most, and the orange ones are where it's decreased. In 2010, Texas's population growth was mostly due to births, but by 2023, the majority of the growth came from people moving in. According to the latest estimates from the U.S. Census Bureau, Texas' population grew more than any other state in 2023, to give you an idea, it increased by nearly half a million people. The increase in the U.S. population is driven by lower death rates, and migration has bounced back to the levels seen before the pandemic. Six out of the ten counties in the U.S. that grew the fastest from 2022 to 2023 are located in Texas. Kaufman County, located east of Dallas, is leading the way with a 7.6% increase. Rockwall and Liberty Counties follow closely behind. They showed a spike in growth at 6.5% and 5.7% respectively. In 2023, Texas welcomed 473,000 new people, more than all 50 states combined. Naturally, the population growth is concentrated in the cities, though some people prefer the countryside. According to estimates from the Texas Demographic Center, about 70% of Texas residents live in the four largest metro areas, including Dallas-Fort Worth, Houston, San Antonio, and Austin. These same four cities made it onto the top 10 largest cities with the biggest population growth from 2022 to 2023. Overall, it makes perfect sense. The population of Texas hasn't just grown and then stopped, it's still growing. If things continue as they are, it's expected that by the state's 200th anniversary in 2036, the population will increase by 3 to 5 million people. 
By 2060, Texas will have between 36 and 44 million people. Considering the outflow of people from California, there's a chance that in a few decades, Texas could become the most populated state in the country. Why do people head to Texas? Well, it's pretty simple and clear. They're attracted by job opportunities and more affordable housing, especially compared to California. The cost of living is generally lower. The atmosphere is family friendly. What's there to say? Texas is booming, and according to the census data, the main drivers of its growth are mostly young people. In terms of numbers, millennials made up 40.5% of those who moved to Texas between 2021 and 2022, and Gen Z made up about 30%. Now take a look at this. This is the Texas Triangle, and it has nothing to do with the Bermuda Triangle. The Texas Triangle is a mega region that includes the four largest cities of the state, Houston, Austin, San Antonio, and Dallas-Fort Worth. I've mentioned these cities before. It's here that around 70% of Texas' population lives. Also, more than 75% of Texas' GDP is generated here in the Triangle. It's expected that over the next 40 years, the region will grow by more than 65%, and by 2050, around 35 million people will live in the Triangle. By the way, Texas has the highest number of densely populated cities in the country. If you take a list of the 25 U.S. cities with the largest populations, six of them will be in Texas. Even California only has four cities on that list. So the population in Texas keeps growing, which means more housing is needed. And the state's working on that. From 2010 to 2022, Texas was number one in the country for building new homes. During this time, about 2.5 million homes were built, which accounts for 22.5% of all homes in the state. Oh, and don't forget, the electors votes are distributed between states based on the population census. Electors are special representatives from each state who choose the president after regular citizens vote. Each state gets a number of votes equal to the number of senators and representatives in its delegation in the U.S. Congress. If you're not into American politics, this might seem complicated, but I'll try to make it simpler. California, with nearly 39 million residents, has the highest number of electoral votes, 54. Texas is second, having 40 electoral votes. The population of California is shrinking, while Texas's population is growing. As a result, the number of electors is also changing, and this is really important for political weight. There are predictions that by 2030, California will lose four votes, while Texas, on the other hand, will gain four votes. According to other forecasts, California will have 48 votes by 2030, and Texas will have 42. But either way, that really shrinks the gap and makes any election battle damn tense. What about the economy? Thanks to its size and workforce, Texas is literally seen as a powerhouse in the global economy. It's the leading state in GDP, exports, population growth, and job creation. If Texas were an independent country, it would have the eighth largest economy in the world, ahead of Australia, Italy, Mexico, Russia, and Spain. Yes, it's ranked eighth for now. Companies keep moving to the state to find good employees, and there are more than 15 million people here. Plus, in Texas, you can take advantage of world-class infrastructure with international access by land, sea, and air. Texas has over 300 trade schools and 125 technical programs. The state actively supports companies, both big and small, and it supports them so well that over 100 out of the 1,000 largest public and private companies in the U.S. are based in Texas. Texas makes up almost 10% of the U.S. economy, and in less than 30 years, the state's economy has more than doubled. To give you an idea of the scale, in 2022, Texas' GDP reached $1.88 trillion, falling behind California's economy, which was at $2.89 trillion. But every year, the gap between these two giants is getting smaller and smaller. While inflation, supply chain issues, and labor shortages are plaguing businesses across the country, it seems that both companies and skilled workers are flocking to various cities in Texas. To understand why Texas is the best state for business, just take a look at the low tax rates. They let companies invest in their employees, expand into new markets, and boost their profits. The economy of the state is as good as its ability to deliver its products out into the world, but Texas's massive infrastructure ensures that the state remains a top exporter. Texas offers the largest transportation network in the country, with over 313,000 miles of public roads, nearly 10,500 miles of railroads, 380 airports, and 16 seaports. It's hard to pass up opportunities like these. Besides, the state's increasingly positioning itself as a corporate haven for businesses and an economic refuge for people looking for a more affordable cost of living. 
and it's working. But there's also something else Texas can brag about that helps keep the state's economy going. Natural resources. Texas produces over 40% of America's oil and nearly a quarter of the country's natural gas. It's also the leading state in wind energy production and second in solar power. But while you can find sunshine and wind in a lot of places, natural resources are a whole different matter. The oil and gas industry is the backbone of Texas's economy. You could even say that Texas has more oil and gas than any other state. There are five major oil and gas formations here, including the Permian Basin, which accounts for 44% of the country's crude oil production and 17% of natural gas production. In 2023, Texas was also recognized as the largest exporter of energy resources, 65% of U.S. energy exports coming from there. And let's not forget about the oil and gas pipelines. Without them, extracting natural resources would be pointless. So in Texas, there are almost 490,000 miles of pipelines delivering oil and gas where they're needed. They run both within the country and beyond its borders. Oil and gas production has been breaking records since 2023, and it looks like it's only going to keep growing. Data from open sources show that Texas is ready to stay the energy leader of the country for many years. Why wouldn't it? When there are natural resources, infrastructure, and a workforce? Over 200,000 Texans work in oil and gas, and their average income ranges from $60,000 to $100,000 a year. But 200,000 people are only those directly involved in extraction. In fact, over a million jobs are indirectly supported by the oil and gas industry, from restaurants and hotels to retail stores. And what about the income? Texas gets more than $26.3 billion from the oil and gas sector. That brings in $72 million every day for schools, roads, emergency services, and much more. Besides natural resources, Texas's location also gives it easy access to air travel across the United States and Latin America. Look at the map. Texas is in the heart of the country, so it's the perfect spot for logistics operations. From here, goods can be distributed efficiently to major markets across the U.S. Since Texas has access to everything, major highways, railroads, and airports, companies in Texas can easily reach customers all over the country, doing it faster and much cheaper than from any other state. By the way, the third largest airport in the world is in Texas. Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. It's located between Dallas and Fort Worth, so it serves both cities. It's the third busiest airport in the world by flight traffic and the second busiest in terms of passenger numbers. When it comes to size, only Denver International Airport in Colorado and King Fahd International Airport in Saudi Arabia are bigger. Meanwhile, in Texas, there's Perot Field Fort Worth Alliance, the first industrial airport in the world built for cargo and corporate flights. In terms of logistics, it's a real treasure for any kind of business. And as I've already mentioned, companies are actively moving everything they can to Texas. First and foremost, of course, their headquarters, and many are moving here from California. A whole wave of big companies, including Charles Schwab and Oracle, have left the Golden State for Texas in recent years. Chevron, the oil giant that had been in California since 1879, became the last company to make the move to Texas at the time this video was made. This happened after California sued the company over risks related to fossil fuels. Elon Musk also announced he's moving the headquarters of the former Twitter and SpaceX to Texas. And this isn't his first move. Back in 2021, Musk moved Tesla's headquarters from Palo Alto, California to Austin, Texas. Among other companies that have moved to Texas from California in recent years are Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Toyota Motor North America. In the end, Texas took first place for net job growth from businesses that moved to the state between 2010 and 2019, and most of these jobs came from California. More than 25,000 businesses have moved to Texas, bringing along 281,000 jobs. And it's far from over. By the way, they don't just move there from California. Caterpillar, the company that makes construction and mining equipment, is moving its headquarters out of Illinois. But yeah, also to Texas. Where else, right? McLaren's also moving its North American headquarters from New York to Texas. On top of that, there have been Silicon Hills here for quite a while now, much like Silicon Valley in California. And so, with everything going on lately, discussions have begun about whether these hills can turn into the new valley, reaching everything Silicon Valley has accomplished and more. Texas is also leading as the headquarters of headquarters. Right now, 55 companies from the Fortune 500 list have their headquarters here, which is the highest number in any state. But aside from companies that are fully moving to Texas, there are also those opening new offices there. 
Maybe they're just testing the waters before making the move? Apple, for example, has filed an application to build a five-story building with an area of 215,000 square feet. The work should be completed by March 2025. Google is also expanding its presence in Texas and renting two large warehouses in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It's said that the company rents 47 acres in total, which are used as a data processing center. Recently, Samsung Electronics Co. announced the construction of a massive new semiconductor plant in Taylor, Texas, on the northeast edge of Austin. This also means new jobs, economic growth, and other perks. In general, Texas's future looks pretty awesome. Space Texas Like I've already said, one of the companies picking Texas for their HQ is SpaceX. But for this company, the office isn't just an office, it's even cooler. A whole space base. Starbase is an industrial and launch complex for rockets, serving as the main place for testing and producing Starship rockets, and on top of that, it's also the company's headquarters. What's my point? The point is, Texas might become even more powerful thanks to new space missions. Elon Musk announced that within the next two years, his company plans to launch around five uncrewed Starship missions to Mars. Plus, Musk emphasized that SpaceX intends to increase the number of ships sent to Mars, regardless of whether the landings succeed. The goal is for anyone who wants to become a space traveler and head to Mars to be able to do so. Sounds amazing. Super expensive, dangerous, a bit insane, but amazing. The truth is, how soon we'll be able to head to Mars will depend on how well the uncrewed missions go. If most of the missions are successful, crewed flights might begin in as little as four years. But that's the best case scenario because there are always unexpected issues and they're bound to come up. Earlier, Elon Musk said that the first uncrewed mission to Mars could happen within five years and a crewed landing on the planet is possible only in seven. Helpful Sheep how else is Texas different from other states? For one thing, they're about to hire some pretty unconventional workers. Texas plans to let over 6,000 sheep roam around eight solar farms. These animals will act as live gardeners, munching on vegetation over more than 10,100 acres, taking care of the solar plants. Interestingly, this will be the largest agreement in the U.S. for using sheep in this way. And believe me, they'll be pretty comfortable there. It's said that in hot weather, sheep can find shade under solar panels, plus there's always food in the form of various weeds. As a result, this kind of grazing should reduce the use of herbicides and fossil fuel-powered lawnmowers. On top of that, sheep manure serves as natural fertilizer, and their wool carries seeds of wildflowers that sprout in their hoof prints. Also, sheep improve soil health. For example, Enel tested solar grazing in Minnesota and noticed that in some areas, the organic matter content increased by over two times. This symbiosis of solar energy and agriculture even has a name, agrivoltaics. This solution not only helps solar farms run more efficiently, but also provides ecosystem services. Plus, it boosts local economic development. To put it simply, solar farm owners spend less on maintenance and sheep owners get jobs for their sheep. The sheep get food and everyone's happy. 3D Printed Neighborhood In addition to sheep and spaceships, you can also find some unusual buildings in Texas. On the banks of the San Gabriel River among the hills of Georgetown, Texas, they're wrapping up the world's largest 3D printed village. This place, known as Wolf Ranch, is located about 30 miles north of Austin. The project started in 2022 and involves building 100 homes, making it the largest 3D printed housing initiative. Just two years after work began, the neighborhood's almost ready and will soon start welcoming residents. This whole thing was started by two companies, Icon, specializing in large-scale 3D printing, and Lenner, one of the largest home builders in the U.S. To make 3D printed houses possible, specially designed massive 3D printers were used. They gradually laid down layers of concrete and other materials, creating a pre-programmed design. On top of the buildings, metal roofing with standing seams was installed, and all of this was completed with solar panels providing the house with electricity. Seems like they didn't use any sheep, but that's for now. Icon says that 3D printing makes it possible to build homes fast and at a large scale while saving energy and cutting down on waste. So the final buildings aren't just high-tech, but also eco-friendly and pretty expensive. In August 2024, there were eight models to choose from. The least expensive one cost $430,000. 
and had 1,570 square feet of living space, including three bedrooms and two bathrooms. There are bigger and pricier versions available, but their prices aren't specified. Oh, and by the way, this is the first village in history to be fully built by robots. Leader in Cleanliness A troubling fact, in the last few years, air quality in the U.S. has been on the decline. A 2024 report shows that over 137 million people in the U.S. have been exposed to polluted air, which poses a serious health risk. The biggest threat comes from fine particles released by factories, power plants, and vehicles with internal combustion engines. These particles can easily enter the respiratory system and lead to health problems. So you see where I'm headed with this? Texas is in the top states in the U.S. with the least air pollution. Wait, what? No, that's right. Even with the oil and gas production, the highways, the airports, and all the factories, this state still has a lot of spots where you can go for a walk and take a deep breath of fresh air. These aren't just words. The air quality in Texas is confirmed by a study called A Breath of Fresh Air. The air quality was assessed over five years to identify the cleanest spots in the U.S. Yes, most of them are in Alaska and Hawaii, but Texas also stands out for its environmental cleanliness. Despite the dry climate, the level of air pollution and pollen count here remain low. Surfside Beach, a city in Brazoria County, Texas, is listed in the ranking of the best spots to go for a vacation or even buy a house. It ranks 17th in the list of U.S. cities with the cleanest air. Right after it are Rockport and Port Aransas, which are in 25th and 27th place, respectively. And you owe me something, as usual, under the video. See you later.